for the in-person meeting. And part of it is because we have fabulous, fabulous folks at the district who are helping us to make sure that what goes on here is accessible. And one of the things that we heard is people are really interested in speakers. Speakers would make our meetings oftentimes go hour and a half to two hours, which made them, to be very honest, even less accessible um, for folks maybe trying to come during a lunch period or something like that. So we're trying to make sure for example, like the college kickoff, um, college kickoff, the college parent meeting last week, we're trying to film more of those types of things so that we can post them and make them more accessible. So um, Ms. Smith and Ms. Wilson have been so helpful in helping me, helping us to think through the best way to do that. Because um, I do a little bit of it in my job, but not a ton. So I'm learning a lot, as is um, Ingrid Kellen. Um, so I just want to welcome you. Um, I did, did people get, we made a few copies of the strategic plan and you might just, we wanted to save paper, so we didn't print a ton of them. If you don't mind sharing, Megan, do you have one? Okay. Do you all both have one? No. Okay. Um, I know you know this well, the strategic plan. Um, so, part of, can you um, I just wanted to, we're always trying to start our meetings by, oh, I'm really close to the camera, sorry. Um, um, so, yeah, I probably don't want to do that. Um, so we're trying to always focus on what Dr. Barnes for the high school identified as really important priorities that parents can partner on. And those are around, we know we can't do everything, we know we have limited time, resources, and energy. Um, but when he and I met, something that's very important to him for the high school um, with respect to our strategic plan is around diversity, um, really making sure, and this is something I'm excited about too and we've talked about, um, that our parent engagement matches our parent population. And so we want to make sure that we are welcoming folks, sharing lots of information with everyone, um, and also celebrating. A lot of us, I mean a lot of us in this room have talked about how the reason why we came to Homewood one of the top reasons was not only the academic rigor, but also the diversity, and that's something we value. So that's something that we're trying to work on um, as a partner with the school. And then communications and technology. So um, those are, I just wanted to always keep that as our focus, and part of what um, you and then the folks on our YouTube channel um, will see today reflects that. Um, so Molly, if you'll come up just for um, a bit. And yes, yes, here are your parameters there. Right here? Yep. Okay. Yeah, good. Um, I know you're a yogi, sometimes you take yeah. more space. I do. <laughs> I do. Okay, so we're continuing with this book. So our first question that we asked two months ago was, wait what? Has anybody had any wait what moments? Like to clarify, to not jump to conclusions? Yeah. You want to share? Sure. Um, I had a student, and um, I work with university students, and so I had a student that I was really frustrated with, and sometimes I echo um, what our educators are going through, although it looks a little different at the university level and the high school level. Um, and this student was making up all kinds of excuses why he couldn't um, do what he was supposed to do for the course that I was teaching. Um, but I tried to suspend that initial judgment of you're really slacking off, and I got to know him a little bit more, and I got to understand what was going on with him, and so we were able to come together and come up with a plan uh, that you know, worked for him and where he was with his health. Nice. So. Yes, there's always more to the story, right? So the second question we asked was, I wonder, which plays into there's always more to the story. So last month we talked about, I wonder, dot, dot, dot. Did anybody wonder anything? Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? I wonder. Yes, yeah, so that's important to let your brain get there. 
because we don't wonder a lot. A lot of times we're just in our plan. We're just going to stay in our box, in our routine, in our pattern. So this month the question is, couldn't we at least dot, dot, dot. So I will admit, when I read that that was the question for this month, I don't like that question. I don't like to lead with negative contractions. I would like to say, could we at least, or could we maybe, but he says no. Couldn't we at least is the question we're working on. So he says that diversity is something that can be a source of, let me say it right, a source of strength or a source of division, which is something we need to think about as we move like aggressively into diversity practices. But like you just said, diversity enriches our community and enhances learning. That's what Homewood has claimed. So that is in print. Homewood is claiming that we will use it to enrich and enhance community. So couldn't we at least is your question for the month. And I brought a friend of mine named Caroline with me so that we could model an awkward conversation for y'all. Caroline, will you come up? And I didn't tell her why I was bringing her with me until we got in the car. And I said, I will pick you up. <laughs> so I was afraid she wouldn't come. I was, so this is my friend Caroline. Had I known, I would have told you Sunday. Sorry about that. Oh, it's not, it's not so good. good. It's like being rude. <laughs> so I told her she was so brave to come, and then I was trying to explain what we've been doing, and then I was like, "This is actually my only third. This is my third meeting. Like I don't, I don't do this." And she said, "You're brave too. Isn't that beautiful? I just I appreciate. Nobody else is going to tell me that today at all. So I appreciate that. So I'm going to ask Caroline some questions, and she's going to answer them. Caroline, what's your name? Caroline. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, how many children do you have? I have three. What are their names and ages? Um, the oldest is Cedric, 13, and the second one is Remy, 11, and the youngest one, Sasha. And what am I missing? Yeah. yeah. 10, <laughs> 11. It's hard. The and ages keep changing. It just, oh, that's it. Cedric is 13, and 11, and 10. And yeah. 10. Right. So does that, does that mean you have? All three schools. All three schools. Ooh. Yes. We morning have the and same afternoon. Morning and afternoon. We are Uber, right? Uber, right? <laughs> yes. But we carpool, which is awesome. Carpool is awesome. We all need it, right? Especially the high school. Carpool they keep telling is us, awesome. please carpool, yeah. right? It's outstanding. You have a beautiful accent. What French. languages do you speak other than English? French. French. Well, yeah. My accent is both French. I speak other languages, but my accent is definitely from French. French. Um, where are you from? Haiti. Haiti. Okay, now I'm going to model jumping to conclusions. Oh my God, did an earthquake eat your house? Is that why you're here? No. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get here? Yeah. Um, so I got here because I wanted to study. Um, so my degree is in psychiatry. And I was like, well, maybe there's a little bit more than individual psychiatry counseling sessions. So I decided I wanted to go in public health. So I applied for a scholarship. And I sent my application to different colleges. But the program sent my application here. And here I was accepted. And I came here. And it's like the city chose me. And I'm so happy to be there. What's your favorite thing about Birmingham? family friendly. Go Homewood, right? Because <laughs> like we can resonate with almost all of her answers, right? Even if her accent sounds a little different, even if the story of how she got here is a little different, but it's okay to ask those questions. And I think we get in our routines and we just think, I could just keep going and not have to meet another person and everything would really be fine in my life. Or maybe we could say, hey, are you in the same boat I am where we spend so much time waiting on people in the car? You want to just hang out? Come get in my car. Let's just talk about it. So thank you so You're much. Welcome. Yes. So y'all can ask Caroline more questions. Well, like does your Caroline have questions for you? Would you have any questions for me? Yes, Molly. Are you from Birmingham? I am. Oh, it's like a boomerang. <laughs> we keep leaving and coming back. That's great. Um, I do enjoy meeting people who have grown here because they can share their history of the city, which I'm not familiar with at all. So it tells me. Um, how about your experience being here and allows me to share also my experience coming from a different place. So how do you like corporate experience? It drives me crazy. 
because I think it's so inefficient and I could be doing more. But then I also realize that I'm in, I'm in go mode all the time, so to have to sit and wait is a good practice. But it's hard for me, so I get uncomfortable. How about you? So what I like more about carpool is that when I have different kids in the car, they will talk, whereas if I <laughs> ask my kids any question, how was your day? Good. <laughs> oh, did you have a test? Yes. Did it work well? Yeah. <laughs> so so but then, she has three boys, so now I'm going to ask, what is it like if a girl is in the carpool? Actually, it's good because they tend to talk more, and so I would get a hint of what's going on at school, whereas the boys are, we have this to do, and they're like more focused on what they have to do, but not talking about other things. Yes. So it's good. I think she told me that once before, is that that's how she found out things were happening at school because a girl was in the carpool. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Stereotypical, but funny. Um, so this can happen. And we can help make this happen if, we need, if you need facilitating. Um, next week is Thanksgiving. And then the week after that, Thursday at 11.30, I'm hosting an interfaith Thanksgiving at my house. This is our third annual. And there's some food things that happen based on faith-based traditions and respect for animals and the things that are important to people who maybe don't shop at Publix every day. Like, like me. So I wanted to invite all of you if that could happen on a Thursday um, because not everybody knows somebody who wears a headscarf or who has a relative who was in the synagogue last month or two weeks ago. It was just two weeks ago. Um, and on behalf of the PTO, I don't know if y'all knew this, but the band meeting was the night of the vigil, was the night of the college thing, of all the nights, right? Well, the PTO lit a candle and they held a moment of silence for all of our Jewish brothers and sisters, some of whom were in the band, so that they could feel included. So we're just trying, just lighting a match sometimes will help. So our question is, couldn't we at least, so this bottom half here, I'm gonna pass this around. If you wanna take a shot of it with your phone, on, with your camera on your phone, not your phone on your camera, um, that could be your reminder to this month, consider this question. Could we at least have a conversation? Can we at least go on a walk? Could we at least, Find out, how did you get from Haiti to here? She's a medical doctor with a Master's of Public Health on a Fulbright Scholarship. Like, lots of stuff to learn from Carol. You're so humble. And from me too. And from me too, <laughs> yes. I teach a lot of yoga. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass this around. Um, the bottom, it has the information about the lunch. So just text me, my number's right there, if you would like to come and meet more people to learn more things or share your experience of Homewood. Right, yay, thank you. Yay, yay for diversity. Molly, do you mind just leaving us in a moment of silence before we do the rest? I don't, not at all. Yeah. Um, all right, can we exhale out all your breath? So get totally empty first. Now take a deep breath in. And let it out through your nose. Take a breath in. See if you can hold it. Now let it out to the count of six, five, four, three, two, one. One more breath in. You can feel where the chair is supporting you. Notice your feet. Notice the back of your neck. Notice your jaw. And gently bring your shoulders up to your ears so you have no neck. And then as you exhale, pull your shoulders down. Now see if you can pull them down a little bit more. Now you're all a little taller with a clearer head. Yay. Hey, Sam. You're welcome. I almost feel like you want to. Let's just all take a nap. So, thank you. Um, just to tie that a little bit, um, mindfulness 
and the practice of reflection are important in different pedagogies, different ways that at the high school they teach, at universities and colleges they teach, looking at how do we combine um, teaching and learning and the setting where I am, faith and learning, I know for a lot of families at Homewood of different practices, faith is important. So I appreciate you know, just that practice of mindfulness. And there's a lot of research that mindfulness, when brought into the classroom in the school setting, really does help um, children, students to, to focus. So I'm glad we, we got to practice that today. Um, just real quickly, if folks could look at um, the budget report. Um, really the only um, thing that we need to look at, we're still solvent, and um, we sold mm -hmm. about um, $1,800 in spirit year, which is about on target. I'd like us to bump that up a little bit. I'll be really honest, um, I said I would lead the volunteer re recruitment for spirit year, and I haven't recruited as hard as I could. Um, but what I think maybe we're, what we are going to do, and Gina Stokes, she's working this morning, she's our PTO president-elect for next year, and has been working hard um, to support the Spirit Year um, effort, is um, to sell at some basketball games, which we haven't tried before. Again, with the focus on communications, technology, innovation, we're just going to try some new things, which is why we are filming today. Um, and we want to welcome you as well if you're viewing this online um, on our new YouTube channel um, because your feedback is also important. We realize you'll be viewing this and you might not be able to give immediate constructive feedback, but know by going to our PTO website and we'll walk you through also Homewood City Schools website today um, that you'll be able to and we welcome um, constructive feedback. So, budget report, um, could I have a motion um, to approve both the minutes um, and this particular budget report as we finalize it? Move. I move to. That's all good. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so great. Um, so we have today um, Merrick Wilson, um, who's here from um, the school district, and she works in the area of communications. It's really exciting that um, I know this has been a project in the making, yes. um, and you've worked really hard at it. Um, so she's going to walk us through the new website, and then also use this small group for some constructive feedback. I mean, there are several different audiences, if you think about it, for this website. You have community members, you have parents, you have faculty, you have staff um, at all of the different schools. Um, am I missing? Who else would I be missing as constituents or audience members? You have school board members, you uh, might have folks coming to the community for the first time and looking at the school district. Could this be a place um, for my child? So we're going to have you walk through it. Thank you for being here. And then any feedback that you would like to see. Well, thank you guys for letting me come and talk to you today. Um, as Ali said, the, the website has been um, a, a child that we have been working on for about a year. Um, six years ago, Homewood City Schools changed all of our school websites. And the reason why we did that then was because we did not have the capability, we didn't have the, the option of being able to log in from anywhere and update our websites. Our websites also didn't read to each other the high school couldn't read from the board. So if school was closing for um, weather, we would physically have to get to our offices and change each one of those websites instead of being able to just one person logging in from home and being able to make that happen. So six years ago, we really wanted to look at the back end of the website and making sure that we could all work on it, that we could all tie in together. So if you don't know, we actually have educators that um, build our website. So we have one person from each of the schools that is in charge of the school website uh, among the other jobs that they have to do. So we don't actually have a full-time um, uh, website department. So these are educators that do our sites. And then I do um, the district site as well. So six years ago, we got new websites that we loved very much. But as time changes, uh, we saw that there were different needs and um, some more innovative tools that we were interested in having. Another part of that was that um, being ADA compliant or trying to get your websites as close to being ADA compliant 
um, was very important, very important for our community members, our students, and our parents who want to view our website and get information as well. So those were things that we started looking into. Um, Any time that we're coming up with a uh, new technology or products for our school system, we're also looking at cost. And so we looked at our websites, but also when we do call you guys to let you know that school is canceled for weather, that was a separate program. Those two programs, our websites and our rapid notification, did not read from each other. So someone would have to physically log in and tell you that school was canceled and then log into each of our websites to put it there as well and then on social media. And so when moving to this uh, website provider, we have now bundled that whole package in together. So our rapid notification, our social media, and our websites, and eventually a quick app will all tie in together so parents will get all of that information at the same time, same content. Um, so you will probably in the next month or so, late November or early December, start getting some test messages from our new rapid notification system, which we're very excited about because, like I said, we can make one message and it will shoot out between all of our platforms. So I hope you've had some time to look at our new websites. Um, all of our schools in our district went live at the same time. Um, we have been loving getting the feedback from our parents and our community members. We've actually made some changes even last week to the website because we look at it, we try to look at it from educators, um, from community members, and then from visitors who may know nothing about our school system. So we try to look at it different, many different ways to see if I was looking for this content, is this where somebody would look? Are we making it too difficult for them to find something? So if there's any, any um, time you're going through our websites and something doesn't make sense to you, please feel free um, to let us know because we, we do appreciate the feedback. Um, just to start with our district page, one of the features on our website that we really, really loved um, is that as you scroll down, you'll notice your white bar at the top, your content bar, follows all the way down. So no matter where you go on our website, your top navigation, which we're going to say is key information that we think um, um, stakeholders will need on our website, will follow you all the way down. So that was something that we thought would be important. So as you can see, our district website, we have these different little pockets here of information that some of them drop down, resources. We try to make things as general, or um, what I'm going to call our, our headlines or our channels, we try to make them as general as they, as they could be. Instead of putting a whole bunch of links on our website and making you search in a lot of places, we try to make little pockets where all of that would um, house our information for our school system. We also have a search bar up here in case anyone um, is looking for specific information. Say you want to find out who the superintendent is and you don't want to go through all those, you can just type in superintendent and anything from our website will pop up as well. Down here, which is um, this little white bar that goes down with the little circle icons, we're calling those our quick links. And those are found on all of the school websites as well as the district. Um, a little area where you can find um, uh, quick tidbits of information where we think um, uh, a lot of our parents probably go to um, or for the district our visitors. Employment is a big tab that uh, we get a lot of clicks on that at the district page. Um, down here, this is only on the district page, but it's, um, I like to say, fun little areas where we could put in graphics, but important information like our learning targets, um, registration information, information on our facilities and our construction that we have going on at all five schools, and of course our strategic plan. And then when you come down to our, this is really where our content changes. This is our district news and our upcoming events, and then an area where we have um, our social media as well. Something else that we liked about this page, even though we have our um, social media on the homepage up there, what we also liked was this blue bar down here on the bottom that follows everyone. Um, also has quick links to our social media. And we didn't have a great social media presence uh, where our parents could find that on our old website, so we were glad to have a couple of different options of where we could put them um, as well. Do you have to have a Twitter account or Facebook account to be able to look at those things? You okay. do not. So I'm not even logged into Twitter here, and so if you just click on it, it'll let you view. Our, our Twitter page. So you can, if it says right here, if you have an account, you can log in, but we have all of the school districts accounts, um, like the, uh, the individual school accounts, teachers accounts may be different, but the, the school accounts and then the Homewood City Schools district accounts are open to the public. 
so you're able to view them. And then, as I said, down here we've got, um, and I believe the other schools will check as well, but I believe the other schools all have their, their latest tweets scrolling on the side. So I'll show you the high school's page as well. So up here at the top, we still have our translate button, which we did have um, for our, on our last website as well. But we put this, we moved this up to the top because on our last website, it was down at the bottom. So um, if you did want to translate the website, you kind of kind of had to search for it. So we put that up there at the top. We thought was important um, with our select schools as well. So for the high school, which I know you guys are, that's probably the one that you guys are going to um, the most. This is the high school's new page, and as I said, you'll see this white bar will follow you as you go down. Here are what, I, what we are calling our quick links. So we try to think about what are the things that parents for students who are already enrolled in our schools, what are some things that they're probably going to often? And we thought that would probably be menus, for, um, at the high school level, menus, registration, Clever, um, foundation, Schoology, online payments, I now Home Portal, and Athletics. So those are just kind of quick little areas. They're all up here in your top navigation as well, but we thought we would branch those out. So you could get to, like if you go to Student Life, here's Athletics. But we thought this might be something that people are looking at. Can I ask two questions? Yes. So just like that still says Bailey Theater, and I know we had to change the location here just because of construction. Um, are there, what's the right process if um, parents had feedback, you know, something doesn't make sense, or maybe, yes. you know, it's a lot of information, maybe there is an error, and yes. they want to let someone know, or even would have an announcement or content, and I realize you can't feature everything yes. here. Yes. What's the right process for that feedback and that content for you? So there's a couple of things you can do. You can always email me. The school system also has a general email address, which is hbe at homewood.k12.al.us. But then also on all of our school websites, at the bottom there's a contact us, and you can do that as well. So if, you know, if there's anything you ever see on the websites, please feel free to contact me. Um, I know you can contact Dr. Barnes as well, and he can send you over to me or um, the tech specialist at the high school if we need it, or this contact us button here at the bottom. But okay. any of us are happy to um, to get that taken care of, and I can uh, change that one for the baby. And as what's well. I mean, all of us are, are our children are involved in lots of different things. People are passionate. What's appropriate? for us to say, here's some content, can we share it on the high school website, on the district website, because yes. I know you can't feature everything. Yes, well I actually, in, in my department, I love when parents, teachers, community members, anybody sends me content. Um, what I'll always tell people with social media and our websites, the hardest thing about having them is getting the content on there. Anybody can have a beautiful website or beautiful social media, but without content, it's really not useful. So um, we actually, on the board page, um, one of the quick links that we did for the district um, was a contact us right there in the front, just because we would love to get any kind of, what I say is good news or feedback or anything like that, we'd love to have that and would love to um, be able to put that on our websites as well. Good question. I would imagine in your role, it's hard to, and you can't know every single story, so yes. hearing some of those good yes. stories. And same thing with the media. The media loves getting, um, they, they call us mm -hmm. sometimes and say, do you have something cool going on in your schools? We'd love to feature it. So any anytime we get that information, we do appreciate it. Um, you brought up the, the um, topic of there's a lot of different things going on in our schools, and as you two have the students at three different um, schools, a feature that we do like about the calendar but is different from our previous website is when you click on the calendar from the high school and let me refresh this real quick okay so when you click on the calendar from the high school if you go to this customer calendar view right here it drops down and you are seeing just the events whichever school you're on whichever web page you're on you're going to see just that school's events but let's say you have kids at um, the middle school in Edgewood as well if you click calendar and add remove you will see all the other calendars and you can click on them click I'm done and you can customize the calendar yourself our old websites showed you every school's events and then you had to drill down this way we're letting you customize what you want to see so if you're coming to the high school calendar and you only want to see high school events you can 
But if you would like to see Hall Kenton High School or the middle school Edgewood in the high school, you're able to do that as well. So you're able to customize it. And then we also have um, color coordination so you can see which school's events they are. And then you can always go and add and remove whatever you need. That is awesome. So we make that a little bit easier. And then down here you can export, print, or um, export it into like your Google Calendar if you use Google, um, iCalendar, things like that. If you want to print as well, you have all those capabilities to be able to um, get connected however you would like um, with the different events that we have coming up at the, at the school. Way easier to read. So the calendar I always think is very important because if something's not on the calendar, that is, that's always where we hear it the most about. So we try to, we spend a lot of time on our calendars and, and try to make them as efficient as we can um, for our parents because we don't want anybody to miss any of the fun things that we have at the schools. Um, and as you notice, this red bar right here is different than the district. This is going to be a um, scrolling bar of the upcoming events. It only shows the high school is always going to be packed because they have so many athletic events. Uh, but that will scroll when the 13th is over, it will just automatically move to the 14th, which is nice. Our old website, we do not have um, capabilities of doing that. We had to manually do it. So this website is able to save us, um, uh, the people that are working on the back end, um, some time as well. Um, something else that's nice is down here where you have your content, if you look over here on the left, we have district news, which just automatically pulls anything that we put on from the district. Um, pulls over to the school sites as well, and that's on all five schools. And then the high school here, because there are so many um, um, athletic and organization accounts and teacher accounts, they went ahead and just made a page there. So if you're interested to see um, if your child's uh, teacher has an account or the organization they're in is in there, that is listed right there as well. And then they have their Instagram that is over here to the left. And there are also their contact us is down there on the bottom. I was saying there's a few things that we're, we're taking feedback and we're changing as time goes on. So one of the things that we actually changed last week, um, the technology specialists get together once a month with Dr. Smith and we kind of all sat down and said, okay, let's all compare feedback. What, what are we hearing? And um, one of the big things as I was talking about is these little icons right here at the top, some of them drop down and then some do not. And what we were finding was the first thing people would do, we thought people would hover over them, but the first thing people would do is they just click departments right away. And when we originally went live with our websites, if you click departments, it would take you to the first thing that dropped down. So if you clicked on departments, you went straight to child nutrition. You wouldn't then see the library tab, the school counseling or school nurse tab. And we saw that that could be an issue because parents were saying, I, I can't. I can't find I now. I can't find this, even though we saw it in the drop down menu. If you clicked on the top, you didn't see it. So, as of last week, we changed it. So, if you clicked academics, you will now see the same thing that dropped down in the blue bar is right here on your left as well. So, those, those um, feedback like that is very important because it's helping us to, to move our sites around and we can move them around very quickly um, to make it a little bit more user friendly for each of you. The other um, feedback that we got was the mobile view. I know a lot of us, we look at um, websites from our tablets and from our phones. Um, I tend to do most of that when I'm at home from my phone. And um, this, this clicking on the, the button was kind of the, the hard thing on your phone as well. And so by changing this over, we're hoping that helps as well. 